what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so i decided to finally make a scream ranking video ranking the ghostface killers from worst to best i'm not going to be talking about the scream mtv vh1 tv series i'm just gonna be talking about the film killers so that includes mrs loomis uh Stu mocker billy loomis roman charlie jill mickey the whole shebang we're gonna jump right on into things because i know a lot of people have been waiting for me to give a ranking video um these are just going to be my opinions based off of who i felt had the better motive who i felt had the better plan and who i felt executed it better and also a little bit of who who was the biggest shock factor in terms of when they revealed themselves to sydney and who i just found to give off that crazy vibe more so than the rest at number seven the absolute worst ghost face in the film franchise is this guy here charlie walker uh i believe that was his last name his motive his motive his and jill's motive they were at the same wavelength but then when it was revealed that she was just using him for the fame that's when he kind of just became he he more or less nowadays is like He's like the simp of the Scream franchise when it comes to the Ghostface killers. He's the simp in these killers because his motive was just being like Billy and Stu. And, and then this generation, he wanted to be this generation's Sydney and Randy and that whole ordeal with recreating the original Woodsboro killings. But then when Jill's actual motive was revealed, he just kind of was left at the wayside. It was more of a simp Ghostface, in my opinion but getting on to number six we have Stu mocker i know a lot of people love matthew lillard and this character i love Stu myself i thought matthew lillard was brilliant as Stu. his overacting was some of the more weaker aspects of his portrayal especially at the end during that whole reveal with sydney i'm like math i'm like is it did they really tell him to act like that or did matthew lillard just go overboard because getting just jumping back on one i talk about with his ranking being at number six Stu was fine for what he was but like he was just billy sidekick and his his whole motive of um peer pressure i'm far too sensitive like bro get out of here bro like <laughs> that if that's your motive whatever um so aside from being billy's sidekick and his motive being from what we know we can only take it at face value um i think he was being serious just peer pressure that's why he's getting this rank number six um he was one of the more he was wasn't that shocking of course as we come to find out in the end neither was billy but that's like one of the he's one of the one of the weaker ones just for that reason alone the peer pressure motive <laughs> jumping into number to number five we have roman bridger now roman is actually my personal favorite he is not the puppet master of things the way people think he is he was not in scream one those are all theories from what he said in scream three he had nothing to do with the woodsboro murders he had nothing to do with that all he had to do with was orchestrating marine prescott's murder he left town went on about his business and then he wanted to do a real classic love story the studio said they would let him until um but after he he have to he had to direct this stab movie for them first and that's when he learned everything he developed some jealousy that his long lost sister had this big career that he has always wanted as a as a director and she just has it for being a victim so he wanted to recreate this narrative for himself framing her as the as the killer him being the victim Clint getting all this fame now as a director in hollywood who is a victim of a woodsboro of not of a woodsboro but a killing spree by his long lost sister who tracked down the person who was responsible for the rape of her murder rape of her mother's murder the whole shebang he 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 just wasn't that scott fuller's performance was great but overall i just felt that roman the way he 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 fit into the narrative and his motive it was very very just kind of bland to me and the look on sydney's face was more of confusion than shock honestly she didn't know who roman was <laughs> getting into note number four billy loomis billy loomis is my number four because of the fact that billy loomis honestly is the one person that i, I f would say i felt the most sympathy for him and roman i felt the most sympathy for in terms of their motive uh billy loomis losing his mother and not necessarily losing her to, to death or anything like that but his his love for his mother and the fact that that crushed him so so much that his his parents split splitting up broke him so much 
that kind of got to me in ways it gets to me more now because i've actually there's some personal things that i've gone through that kind of just gets to me every time and i think skeet ulrich is brilliant in the role i think that sydney was more sydney was more shocked by it but we weren't sydney was definitely heartbroken and shocked over it but us the audience i think that was more of a oh wow so it really is him i can't believe they they actually are going with the obvious killer that's how i perceived it i really wasn't that shocked when it was him but his whole narrative and his motive that always struck a chord with me and touched kind of like pulled at my heart a bit due to some personal reasons but jumping into number three mickey now mickey i had to put him in the top three i had to put this guy in the top three his motive is so out there and so so insane to me that i just every time i look at scream 2 i'm like really and he's already he's already crazy because he mrs loomis found him on this on this killer website and he was going to blame the movies and he wanted to go to trial he had it all the way he was just talking about it, he had it all mapped out in his head like bro you're insane he's going he's literally talking about it with so much confidence in himself like he's going to blame the movies uh talking about bob doyle on the witness stand and he's just the way he delivers those lines he he is amazing when he's delivering his lines like that at the end of the movie his character is in the top three for most craziest um i think sydney was definitely shocked by that reveal i was shocked myself because i didn't really see it coming but as you look back at these movies it becomes clear that it was going to be mickey in ways because it's very evident when you look at certain aspects jumping into number two mrs loomis now mrs loomis's motive isn't necessarily one that's overly crazy compared to mickey but mrs loomis always again she struck a chord with me because i you i feel for her a bit like i feel for a lot of not a lot of them but billy and this particular killer in particular mother and mother and son i feel for you guys i get it they they had a nice family and then some home wrecker came and ruined it uh lori metcalf she's amazing in this role her whole motive of wanting to revenge her son's death uh sympathize with her there and i sympathize with the fact that she didn't ask for any of this she didn't ask for this she just wanted to be a loving mother with a loving family and someone else's wife who couldn't keep her legs closed who had some trauma in her past is out here ruining people's families and i kind of sympathize with her there and i just thought that she definitely shocked Sydney. Sydney, she was dodging Sydney left and right in that film. You can't tell me otherwise because she did not come in contact with Sydney to the very end. And Sydney was just, she was blown away. And then number one is Jill. Now, why is Jill number one? Jill is number one because she's actually the only Ghostface killer that's that's gotten the farthest in her scheme. She, all of them have wanted to frame Sydney in some capacity and get away with their scheme jill's scheme and we all know that's the most recent one uh much, very much ahead of its time now revolving around uh fame online fame internet fame how you don't have to achieve anything you just have to have stupid junk happen to you and you'll instantly become famous we all know that to be very much true because a couple of years later we had the catch me outside girl we have all these different people becoming famous Lil tay becoming famous for these ridiculous things that they would do online so scream four was very much ahead of its time as we look back on in jill and her whole motive and how she almost got away with it that's why she's going to get the number one ranking for me emma roberts i understand a lot of people feel some type of way about the performance she gave i didn't really find it that bad i think she did great for what she was given and she is the number one ghost face in my opinion because she almost got away with it and i found her motive to be the most her motive to be the most unique now the last thing i wanted to wrap out with on this video is images of the lovely courtney cox on set of screen five in costume as gail weathers and as you see here it looks like she's back on her bs she clearly is up to her old tricks um i don't know if i these images don't make me think her and dewey have split but i wouldn't be surprised if they did between the events of screen four and screen five i know a lot of people would want to see them together but getting back to this image these images you see her here in this red business suit she looks amazing uh she's clearly on the set of a recent crime killing that has occurred in woodsboro and she's clearly up to her old tricks whether or not she has a podcast is yet to be seen what she's doing in full capacity we won't know until the movie releases so those are my rankings on ghostface and the killers i realize i didn't give too many details but i honestly don't have many thoughts on it other than what i gave for each specific killer because 
Jill, she is number one. They all wanted to get away with it. Jill came the closest. Let me know what you guys think about all this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications so that you never miss a video. In the description, I will have links on my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course, to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.